Welcome, Jared here from SoundGuitarLessons.com. In this video, we are going over the five top technique mistakes that self-taught guitarists make. We're just going to fly through this list and uh, just I'm going to recommend how to take care of some of these technique issues that not just self-taught guitarists and not just beginner guitarists, but a lot of intermediate guitarists and guitarists everywhere uh, might be having issues with these particular technique uh, challenges. Uh, so to prevent that and help you move along smoothly in your journey, uh, we're going over those five top technique mistakes. Let's start it off. Technique mistake number one is the grip of death. <laughs> Just squeezing too hard. Just squeezing too hard. And probably a lot of us, we know that we shouldn't be squeezing so hard, but how do you work on not squeezing uh, too hard? Well, let's just have this be a reminder that the pressure we need to push down the notes should not be needing to come from the thumb or the back of the guitar okay so i'm going to show you here the best i can with this angle that my thumb does not need to here we'll do turn like this okay even for chords or even bars or Okay, it's awkward, especially with trying to show you that my thumb is out. So trust me that I'm gonna do, I'm gonna play a bunch of stuff. My thumb is not touching. Now, it's not ideal, it's quite awkward. The thumb is like a tail for an animal. Like, it would be weird for it not to have its tail. It helps it balance, at least some animals. So they say. It's just an analogy I like to use, but the thumb is not what the squeeze of the thumb is not what's causing the pressure. So what we want to work on is not doing the grip of death, not doing too much squeezing and using gravity. Your elbows hanging over here. Let that pull a little bit totally on its own. This is freebie pressure. You get free pressure from gravity here. You know, if you hold onto the guitar enough and play a note and kind of use that holding on to not let it kind of fall back this way, you'll realize how much pressure you get. Now don't pull on it too much. That can cause strain in other places and feel awkward in its own right. But just a little bit of that arm help uh, where maybe you're pulling a little tiny bit, but a lot of it is just kind of naturally there. You can swing your elbow like this. So the grip of death and uh, squeezing too hard is big time, big time technique mistake number one. Now it's not overnight and it's not just from deciding to that you'll stop doing that, but something to continually check on and strive for. Let's go on to number two. Technique mistake number two is very related to the first one. And this one is your thumb getting stuck in a position, not letting, or I should say it another way, not allowing your thumb to move with your hand position, your thumb getting left behind. Okay, so I'll just show you my thumb here for a second so you'll see what I mean. This is what happens if you move up the neck and the thumb stays. Now, I typically have my thumb down more. It's not bad to have it up for, you know, certain voicings. Uh, it kind of can, it's supposed to be very dynamic and very fluid and moving around. So a good rule of thumb, very appropriate <laughs> to use that term in this case, is that you want your thumb kind of like a magnet lined up with your middle finger on the other side of the fretboard. So as I move around, it is following around, not kind of getting left behind and then hopping over. It is fluidly following around and it's following this way and this way, and it's very light. So without the grip of death, you're just using it as this kind of balance that can just be following along. So the angle isn't great here because I don't have a camera angle set up for this. But if I play up here, look at how my thumb is pretty high up. My thumb is like way up here. I'm playing on the top string. Okay. And now I'm going to move down. Oh, my thumb follows down. Now you can kind of see it poking up here because now I'm down on the low string. Okay. Now watch my thumb kind of disappear as I go up. Ah, that's because it's down here now because I moved this way. Um, so this keeps your fingertips kind of at the same angle for all the strings, because if you get comfortable with playing and sounding great with your fingertips 
used to the strings in one, at one angle, well, then you just want to approach them everywhere that way. Look at the way I, what I'm doing here is kind of what we want to do while playing. Like, oh, this is moving around. And it's not going, uh, it's not doing this. It's not doing this. Now, if you're way up here, you got to do that a little bit, especially on different types of guitars. you got to leave your thumb behind to play high. That's the one exception. Um, and everything um, can kind of be a, a, a version of it for your own personal preference, but the grip of death and then therefore keeping the thumb, you know, having the thumb not follow along with you fluidly and lightly. Those are the first two big time technique mistakes to watch out for. Let's move on to number three. Technique mistake number three is playing too hard playing too hard uh usually with a pick but just at all just plucking too hard um and i gotta I'll have to turn my volume down i keep my volume kind of high and then i play softly which is what i highly recommend but playing too hard constantly i gotta turn down more that might be an exaggeration or not uh just digging in the splat sound, just everything, all one dynamic level, and um, just kind of takes away the tastiness that we have available to us if we play lighter and turn the volume up and then use dynamics to be expressive. When we want to. So... I tend to play pretty light, um, and uh, I'd rather have the volume high and then play light. Gets a warmer sound, a richer sound, a rounder sound, even if you want a, a bright sound. There's a lot more expressiveness in there. Now, there's always exceptions to it because of the style of music. You could have a drum set going full blast. You know, and you want just the the actual you want the sound of it great it's art do do whatever you actually want to do but as a default kind of if you're practicing scales or something i highly recommend nice and light and then you can dig in for actual expressiveness and effect let's move on to number four technique mistake number four is super related to the last one and it is holding the pick too hard gripping the pick too hard very related because if you grip the pick too hard you kind of have to if I just hold the pick really hard and try to play lightly, I inevitably get that really thick sound. So these two things are definitely two separate pieces of advice, two separate items on the list. But if you just take care of not gripping the pick too hard, it might take care of the other one, depending on where that's coming from for you. So what you want to do with the pick is you want it to be like a loose tooth. Look at how I'm holding it. It should do this while you're playing. It should be flexing. Uh, the, and, and this is not a soft pick. The answer is not to get a flimsy pick that you can strum with. Nope, definitely not. You can use a very hard pick. Most of the time I'm using this thick style jazz two pick. And when I play, it's not this sound that we talked about before, which if I just grip the pick hard automatically, if I play with it as this hard piece that I have to get through to the strings, then it's gonna be that sound. So instead, it flops really lightly and I'm, I'm holding it. It's not gonna fly out on my fingers, but I'm letting it, I'm letting it kind of flop on the strings. Okay, so I'm holding lightly enough that there is slack and there is give. That is number four, let's do number five. Technique mistake number five is holding your wrist at the same angle, no matter what you play. Okay, so the wrist position and the wrist angle should be very fluid, similar to the thumb moving all around and being very light, very fluid, following around. Well, the wrist needs to be able to do what it needs to do. Now, it's good to have a default as straight as you can wrist, because the more it's bent, you will have to bend it for some voicings or even bend over a little bit, lean over into it or something like that. But you don't want to hold it that way all the time. That will hurt your wrist over time it happened to me so i can speak from experience there so you want to have a straight wrist when possible but you don't want your wrist necessarily always like this angle from the fretboard and you don't want it always like this angle from the fretboard one is not better than the other it's just context just totally context so notice like this kind of open string chord playing this d okay that requires this kind of wrist angle 
okay? But this G, that's a bar, bar, uh, partial bar chord, okay, that requires this wrist angle. So one of them is rotated over here, one of them is rotated over here. So you don't need to try to play that D chord with this straight wrist because you think that's the good technique. Let it go over here where you're kind of touching the fretboard. Yeah, because if you need to play two strings on the same fret with fingers one and two, if you're just gonna play that interval somewhere, well, look at that wrist angle. It's like totally perpendicular to the fretboard. And then if you need to use your pinky and play over here, well, now you have this uh, 90 degree turn of the wrist angle. So, and so when you're playing with a single note here, that's fine. If you're, you could play like this quite a bit where you're maybe, a lot of people do this with the pentatonic scale, where they're kind of in that uh, angled wrist uh, wrist position. And then but some people stay this way all the time where it's this kind of more straight on wrist position, but really just context is what matters. When I play this, it goes a little bit to that angle. If I go over here, then it has to go to that other, that other angle. So it's just fluid and um, being relaxed is the most important thing of all, period. So even if there is gonna be something that makes you lean forward like this, you do it as you need it. And then as soon as you can comfortably, you do it as you, you, do it as you need it to make it as relaxed as possible for you. And as soon as you can, so like here's a great example. I love this chord. This is C minor add nine. And I have to, I have to arch the wrist and lean forward a little bit. I don't want to stay that way though. So as soon as I can get out of that, then I get out of that and keep everything fluid and relaxed. And without that grip of death and without the grip here and with the wrist being nice and relaxed and with the thumb fluidly flowing everywhere, all of those things are just about playing as ergonomically and as relaxed as possible. So we can be in this for the long game because the biggest rewards happen over time as we keep going and keep going and keep going, playing guitar and practicing guitar. So we don't want to get super tired or damage ourselves. And I've done it twice. I've messed up my hand twice. So I'm very aware of uh, what it takes and uh, staying relaxed is the main thing. And all of the, those five mistakes are things to work on and watch out for to stay relaxed. Bonus tip is just make sure you do something that counts as a warm up. Don't worry about what it is. Let it be relaxed. Just count it as a warm up. Let it be five minutes. Let it be 10 minutes. Let it be two minutes. Let it be 15 minutes. Whatever it is for you. Some little portion of the beginning saying, ah, I'm warming up. It doesn't matter. I don't need to sound good right now. I'm not stressing about, you know, getting there or sounding as good as I did when I walked away last time. It just counts as you get in the habit of always doing that. That is a, a bonus technique tip that is super important. Let's just do a quick review of all five. Number one, don't squeeze with the left hand. Number two, let your thumb or don't, these are mistakes. So don't let your thumb get caught uh, as your hand moves. Keep your thumb moving fluidly with your hand position up and down everywhere you go. Number three is just playing too hard with the right hand. Number four is gripping the pick too hard with the right hand. And number five is keeping your wrist angle or avoiding keeping your wrist angle in one static particular position. Let it be fluid. Let it be relaxed. And the bonus tip is make sure you do something that just counts to you as a warm up. Don't let it be too intense. Just a nice, uh, comfortable introduction to practicing for yourself. I have a resource that is super cool and super valuable called Chords with Color. It is a massive chord chart with a bunch of gorgeous, beautiful chord types. And there are many, many ways to use this chord chart for your practicing. One of which is just to play around with the voicings and listen to how beautiful they are. It has a bunch of chords through five different keys and then all the alternatives of those chords that you can replace them with. So you can find interesting chords that are totally re replaceable with maybe your normal chords that you're playing. It's great for songwriting and or just ear training and uh, technique for playing around uh, different voicings. So that's called Chords with Color. There's a link in the description to get it at the top of the description, or you can go to soundguitarlessons.com slash chords with color. It's very cool. So I hope you grab it and play around with it. That's it for this lesson. I'm here every week, so I will be back next week with another lesson. Looking forward to it and see you then.